greet you once again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's indeed very hot inside and I believe it's hot outside as well. If I would be Angel Gabriel, standing in front of the Lord, I would have really enjoyed you being worshipping uh, Jesus in this church. I, I think God must be really happy to look at each one of you who have come here to worship Him. I was there in uh, the Sua yesterday. In Brother Chamo Chan's village, it was extremely hot. And it was uh, more than 250 people gathered for worship. Uh, in the afternoon for more than 4 hours. It was in the, it was in the tent and it was very wonderful to see how people were worshipping. When you go to heaven, you will see more Indians in heaven than in any other place. <laughs> Because you go to around the world and you see uh, different kind of people from different cultures and countries. Many people have no time even for five minutes for Jesus Christ. But I appreciate that people who are here in the church have come to worship Jesus. I see some people, those who are guests and friends among us, I like to welcome each one of them. I like to welcome Pastor Kishore Gil, uh, who is a uh, publishing department director in Northern India Union. I extend a warm welcome to him in this warm heat. <laughs> I also see Brother Surinder and his family from Shimla. I'd like to welcome them. And all of you whose name I know not, but I welcome each one of you. I also would like to thank the choir uh, which just sang a song for the glory of God. And also for the kids, they are called KFC Kids. I was surprised uh, when Dr. Edwin told me that there is a song by KFC Kids. And I, I, I told him, I don't know uh, what KFC Kids mean. Uh, maybe they are from KFC or McDonald's, I did not understand. But he said uh, KFC simply means uh, kids for Christ. I'd like to thank both the leaders of the both the choirs. They have put a very wonderful song for God's heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we can feel your presence right here in the church. I believe many have experienced it when the choir was singing. I was sure that this was not just a feeling, but your Holy Spirit which was impressing our heart. Uh, now I pray that you bless the word uh, uh, in our life. Please touch every 
everyone who has come to meet you and hear the word of Jesus. Please hide us under your care and covering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like you to open with me the book of Mark, which is a very wonderful book. The book of Mark, chapter 8. Mark chapter 8 and verses 34 to 36. Now Jesus himself was speaking to the crowd. And when he had called the people unto him with disciples also, he said unto them, Whoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up the cross, and follow me. And verse 25 on Mark chapter 8. For whoever will save his life will lose it, and whoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, same shall save it. And verse 36 is most important in these verses. For what shall a profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Verse 37, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Now this is a question in 36 and verse 37 of Mark chapter 8. Which we need to understand in the clarity of the Bible. Jesus has asked many questions to people and they could not answer it. And this morning he is asking you and me a question. He is asking, what shall it profit you my brother? What shall it profit you my sister? If you gain the whole world in your hands and what it will gain you? I, I have not met anybody who has gained the whole world on this earth. I read about a great man called Alexander the Great. When he was nine years old, a young boy, he wanted to kill his father. Because his father was a king, a monarch in his mind. And he wanted to kill his father to get his kingdom, his throne. When Alexander grew at the age of 11, he became a king of one kingdom. And very soon he had armies after armies after him. He destroyed countries after countries. He ruled most of the nations of the world. And at the, at the age of 30 years, he was known as the Great Alexander. Now you know that his uh, kingdom was from Egypt uh, to India. Many people bowed before the great Alexander the King. Because he had many millions of people working in his army. Many people took the banner of Alexander Great to the world, the corners of the world. Nobody in his kingdom or around the kingdoms of the world was uh, able to stand before Alexander. But one day, Alexander was dying. He was just 33 years old. Almost same as the age of Jesus Christ. When he was dying, he was put on the ground and he was crying and weeping. And he was crying because his body was very weak. He was suffering with a fever. And the armies were, were around him, they asked him a question. What a message 
you would like to give to the world. So that people after you die will listen to your message. He said, let the world know that I came empty and I'm going empty. When you put me in the coffin box, put my hands outside so they may see that I'm empty. when he had gained the whole popularity and the world he has won. Now you know this great man Alexander the Great. He's not a man of the Bible. He was not a spiritual man. A very cruel and very hard-hearted man.
Because God can see that your feet are on the sand when your head is on the cloud. As I shared uh, the working of God last week about the New York City. Almost 18 million people are living in the city of New York. But there are so many people, those who are lost in that country. Some of you know them very well. I will not name them, but let me share their stories. Why I would like to share it? Because most of you, Many of you, maybe young people, would like to go abroad and settle your life. I'm not against that you go and settle abroad. I take the example of these people. At a very young age, they were graduates. They joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they worked in the church. And as uh, the work began, they worked for more than 20 to 25 years in the church. I know one man, I'm sharing his story with you. He did evangelistic meetings here in India. Rather than in Punjab. He was a pastor over many churches. He was elevated to more positions. But when I looked at him in that country in New York, New York I was surprised. What the work he is doing. In, in India, he was baptizing people in the name of the Lord. I was surprised that to see him that he was selling cigarettes in that country. He's selling the liquor, he's selling the wine. He was a preacher here, but he's a he's a man of a different kind. Sabbath has no meaning for them. To pay tithe to the church is of no meaning anymore. Having a spiritual life is of no use to him. His children are going to be get, uh, getting married, but they are going to be married to a non-Adventist or non-Christian people. They no more fear God, they are no more afraid of the judgment which is coming on this earth. They went there to have a gain, a better future, a better life. <laughs> Jesus said in book of Mark chapter 8. Verse 37 What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I know another man. He also worked in Punjab in different churches. He had a reputation in the church. He visited people. He prayed for them. He had people like anything. When I met him, he got up early morning at 6 o'clock. You know what work he does? He works as a taxi driver. Can you exchange your soul with taxi? Can you compromise your lifetime or your spiritual lifetime with the worldliness? You can see the both pictures of the both countries. God is saying here in this passage. What profit you will get in? When you exchange these things. You know these people have lost faith in God. 
God. They never go to any convention. They no more go to any church. They have lost faith in Jesus Christ. They have lost because they are blinded by the wealth of that country. What shall it profit a man? There are two shops in this Bible, in this passage. One is physical shop. One is spiritual shop. Now, from uh, from which shop uh, uh, or to, from which shop you are buying more? Maybe most of the people around the world are buying for only the physical shop. Only for their bodily pleasures. Only for their own family and for their lifestyle. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew. We have come this pattern many times in life. Matthew chapter 6 verse 20 says, Lay not your treasure on this earth. Lay not your yourself treasure, lay your treasures in heaven. And verse 19 say, do not lay treasures on this earth. Because thieves will break and steal it. And you know who the thief is. It is devil who steal our souls from Christ. So what shall it profit you if you are going to get the, all the things of this world? <laughs> Maybe when they were here, these people whose story I shared with you. When they were here, they were looking for a better house. Maybe they thought, well, we will go abroad. Maybe we will support the church even more better with The church is never lacking the funds for God's work. One thing the church always lacks is the faithful and obedient people to the Lord. Maybe these people thought that we will have a better cars when we go to that country. I met a young man, or just 33 year old. He's married today. And I asked, uh, uh, we were sitting on the table eating food and we gave the question each other. He said to me, why don't you come and settle down in this country? I reversed that question, I said, why did you settle in this country? He said, I want to have a better future. I said, do you think people living in India don't have a better future? That's why an Indian pastor has to come in the convention and preach in your church. In your city there are so many pastors, but how come a God has to bring a man from India? I ask him, are you peaceful the way you are living? He is not in a peace, my friends. Then I begin to share a story of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's a wonderful story in the book of Genesis. Lot and his wife and his children left a spiritual man, uh, their uncle Abraham. <laughs> God has called Abraham to give a promised land. But Lot and his family left the promised land and dwelt outside Sodom and Gomorrah. They went and settled down in Sodom. 
so the gamblers they had every sort of sin even the records of heaven are very clear that God saw the sinfulness of Sodom and Gomorrah and God had thought to destroy that city with fire had God not destroyed that city, they would have destroyed the whole world with sin. It would be uneasy for a righteous man to live nearby like Abraham. The people were so immoral, they want to have a physical relationship with the angels, those who are guests in the house of God. So God was thinking that he will not live in the city. I will stay outside the city. And I will be safe living outside the city. You can't be in the water. A small hole in your ship can sink the entire world. As long as the boat is on the water, it looks very nice. But as soon as the water goes inside the boat, it is no more there. This man, Lot, and his wife are thinking that we are safe because we are outside the city. And you know the story. He one day slept with two daughters and had a physical relationship with them. That was the result they dwelled in beside Sodom and Gomorrah. Jesus said, You are in the world, but not of this world. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? If you have relatives abroad, be on your knees and pray for them. Because in that country, God is out of their sight. They don't want God anymore. One man asks a question, why should I need God in this country? Because I have electricity 24 hours and 12 months in a year. You know, I have no, I know many families, when the light, there's a, a current uh, goes off, the, the children begins to pray, Lord, please send the electricity. You know, this country is uh, different from many other countries. Let me share a story of a man who came to my meeting. He's a sick man. He's a worshipper of idols. He can bow down before anybody. But he came to the meetings. The, his heart was open to the gospel. He has come even before uh, when he could come to my meeting. You know what happened? He's a very wealthy man. He owns 110 cars. And he uses them as a taxi for a big business. He's a multi-millionaire man in the city of Detroit. And all of his life he has spent uh, just as a non-Christian. As Jesus was portrayed before him as a savior of his life. He gave his heart to the Lord. He got baptized. You know what? He would like to support the conventions in India. He wants to support a convention in Canada. 
He wants to invest his money for God's cause. He would like to dedicate himself for God's work. My cousin, he's also a pastor in Detroit City. But Sunil's a mom, she comes attend that church. And that man, uh, the pastor needed uh, a lift in the car. He said, I would like to have a, a lift from your car. Out of 110 cars, he said, Pastor, any car is available 24 hours for your work. In exchange of your soul, what you will give to God. I was in uh, Washington D.C. preaching in Maryland in one of the church. My sermon was preached, uh, uh, it was taken in the air in more than 40 countries. <laughs> Some of you have watched that program. As I was preaching, and uh, uh, one man was making the movie. He was taking the video of the whole sermon. His name is Mr. Anil and he comes from a Hindu background. He was living in New Delhi city. A couple of years back, he went to have a better future in uh, America. And very soon, he became a very famous man of that country. He became a right hand of Mr. <coughs> Barack Obama. He takes the video of Barack Obama wherever he goes. And it is a strong Hindu guy. But one day, somebody shared Jesus with him. And he was very happy to know about Jesus Christ. He gave away everything and accepted Jesus. He became Seventh Day Adventist Christian. If Barack Obama is in White House every day, this man is there in White House every day. But every Sabbath, this man gets holiday to come and attend Seventh Day Adventist. He came in the church. And he came in this family. My friends, when I was there in US, he told my uncle, Pastor Samuel Gulam. Since a pastor is coming from India, we should do some recording in Hindi, Punjabi and English. And there is a Loma Linda television network in uh, California. <laughs> and we will give these Hindi songs and Hindi messages and English messages on that television. Why don't we do that? A Hindu man who is Adventist now is thinking to work as evangelist. When I came on in that city, he contacted me. We recorded uh, in uh, two hours time, we recorded more than seven to eight songs. And more than seven to eight sermons are being taped. And he's going to put that uh, to the uh, Hope TV and to the Loma Linda television network. 
سچا اور گھی جو ہے وہ لوہا لندہ یا ہوتی بھی میں جو ہے وہ دکھائی جائے گی what shall a prophet a man اور کیا اس منوشی کو لاب ہوگا if he gains the whole world اگر وہ پوری دھرتی کو لے لے and lose his own soul اور اپنی ہی جان دوا دے and he said to me Mr. Anil اور Mr. Anil نے مجھے اس طرح سے کہا pastor it is God given privilege that I work with Barak Obama اور اس نے کہا کہ بات بات یا پاسر صاحب یہ پرمیشی کا آن یہ اللہ افسر ہے کہ میں بارک اوبام آلی صاحب کام کروں گا He said to me the stage, the pulpit which Barack Obama used اور جو پلپٹ جو ہے بارک اوبام آلی استعمال کرتے ہیں Nobody can use that It's only the President of America uses that کوئی بھی وہ پلپٹ استعمال نہیں کر سکتا صرف جو میری کا پریزیڈنٹ ہے وہ ہی کر سکتے ہیں He said I'm the one who used that pulpit اور اس نے کہا صرف میں ہی ہوں جو اس کے پلپٹ کو استعمال کرتے ہیں And I asked him, I said how you use that pulpit اور پھر میں نے اس سے پوچھا کہ آپ کیسے ان کے پلپٹ He said just before Barack Obama enters any hall. और इससे पहले कि Barack Obama उस hall में प्रवेश करते हैं. I stand before and welcome Barack Obama. और मैं वहाँ पे खड़ा होकर Barack Obama का स्वागत करता हूँ. I'm waiting for that day when I will welcome Jesus Christ. और कहने कि मैं उस दिन की इंतजार कर रहा हूँ जब यीशु को भी आएगा मैं उसका स्वागत करूँ. My friends. मेरे दोस्तों. There are so many people those who have lost their life in that country. और एक बहुत सारे लोग हैं जिन्होंने उस देश में अपने जीवन को खो दिया. There are so many who has lost everything of this world and have found Jesus Christ. What is your choice this morning? Jesus is saying, leave everything, take up the cross and follow. May God richly bless you.